how do we stop the chatter of the mind? What we call in yoga, the monkey mind. <laughs> definitely one of the preliminary stages to the final stage of samadhi or enlightenment and definitely the path prescribed by Pantanjali, one of the most important yogis in modern day times. So I know you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned for this episode because I'm gonna give you a couple of techniques to help you quiet the chatter. My name is Jimmy Bark and I've been meditating since 1981. In 1983, I was initiated into Kriya Yoga. That's a meditation technique that Paramahansa Yogananda taught. Quieting the mind can definitely be one of the most difficult things to do. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit that bell, then you get notified every time I post a new video. Please hit the like button and share it with your friends. Now, after you do a postural yoga class, especially, well, we I teach hot yoga, so a vigorous class, it's gonna be a lot easier to quiet the mind because you're tired. You're laying in Shavasana, you've, exhausted yourself in our class you're going to sweat it's so much easier at that point to get into a quiet state the mind and the body are now more willing to let go so a lot of times you'll see after a yoga class take advantage of that moment just let the thoughts drift across the inner vision of your mind that's one of the techniques now unfortunately when you're laying on your back the spine is now no longer free because in our particular type of yoga, our meditation techniques require the spine to be more erect. So if you're laying on the ground, you're gonna squash that energy. But still, it's a great way to practice what we call yoga chitta vritti naroda. I talked about Pantanjali before. Pantanjali, arguably one of the most influential yogis of, of our time, even though he was 2000 years ago. And he wrote what was called the Yoga Sutras. He wrote them down on palm leaves. They were tied together by sutures or threads. That's where the word sutra comes from. Or suture comes from the word, the Sanskrit word sutra. And arguably his second most famous aphorism, because these were, they had, these were 195 aphorisms, was Yoga Chitta Vritti Naroda, which means yoga is the restriction of the worlds of consciousness, or very simply, yoga quiets the mind. So Pantanjali is the one, and it was controversial at the time, to come up with this concept, because the traditionalists, thousands of years before Pantanjali, their prescription for reaching enlightenment was different. They said, meditate on God, chant God's name, read God in the scriptures and the word of God and then through the, and be a good person. That's how you will evolve. So Bantanjali comes along and he says, well, hold on. We can't evolve if we've got the monkey mind going on. So we got to quiet the mind first in order to find God. So very much the whole concept of yoga was the connection with God, the connection with divinity, connection, whatever God means to you. And I say that a lot because it's not yoga's concept of God or my concept of God. It has to be what resonates with you. I said that before in my meditation video I did a few weeks ago. So he says, when we can quiet the mind, that's when we can connect with, with the divine, with the universe. Because if you have that monkey mind going on, especially the ego mind is gonna keep us in the separation concept of yoga is to have that complete connection with God and with the universe. And we can't do that if we've got the ego mind or the monkey mind keeping us separate. Deepak Chopra has a very cool saying. The universe is waiting for us to reveal ourselves to it in the silent space between our thoughts. So Deepak was always into the gap, the gap between your thoughts. So that's going to bring us to our first technique. So I want you to sit nice and tall. If you're sitting on the floor, make sure you're nice and comfortable. If you're sitting on a chair, bring your butt up against the back of the chair so your spine is free. We talked about before, in our particular yoga, we do what's called spinal pranayama. So we want the spine to be nice and free. So we're gonna close our eyes and shift our gaze 
into the third eye. It's what I call the, or not what I call, but what they call the sixth chakra. Just a gentle shift of your gaze will definitely help quiet the mind's chatter. There's a mechanism that happens, mechanism in the brain that shuts down when you do that gentle shift up. Right to here, third eye of the sixth chakra. And we're just gonna inhale and visualize the breath rising up the spine. And on the exhale, back down. Do that a couple more times. Inhale up. Exhale down. One more time. Inhale up. Exhale down. Now allow your breath to come back to normal. Now I'm going to change the technique. I want you to inhale and hold your breath just for a few seconds. So inhale, hold, exhale, hold. Keep your eyes glued to the third eye. Light, gentle gaze. Inhale up, hold, exhale down. Hold. Let's do that two more times. Inhale up. Hold. Exhale down. Hold. Inhale up. Hold. Exhale down. Now I want your practices on your own. Inhale up. Hold. Your own lung capacity. Exhale down, hold. And in that space between each breath, find a space between each thought. Continue to shift your gaze to the third eye. Inhale up, hold. The thoughts drift across your inner vision. Exhale down, hold. Inhale up. And as the thoughts drift across the inner vision of your mind, imagine your thoughts like clouds in the sky. Focus your attention on the blue sky between the clouds, on the space, between your thoughts. As the thoughts shift across our inner vision, like clouds across the sky. And then slowly open your eyes. So that's one technique that you can use. So just think the thought shift across your vision. There's the thought and there's the space or what Deepak calls the gap between each thought. Now, somebody asked me once, so what does that mean? No thought, it means you're in a blank, black, blackness, what's happening between your thoughts. What happens? My experience, like I said, I've been meditating for a long time. You will find an experience which can be equivalent to a experience of ecstasy, which is a glimpse into enlightenment. I've been told enlightenment has been described, I'm not saying that I've been there, as an ecstasy of expanded awareness. You know, you listen to people who have astral projections or near-death experiences. There's this tunnel of light. There's this feeling of overwhelming joy. That's what happens in the gap between your thoughts. If you allow yourself to be still and allow those thoughts to drift across your inner vision. Here's the second technique. It's gonna be very similar to the first, but we're gonna add two Sanskrit words to it. Hong Sa, H-O-N-G, S-A-U. 
even though it's pronounced S-A-W. So Hong Sa just simply means I am He. I am the universe. I am God, whatever God means to you. Don't get hung up in the words. So, and it's taught by Yogananda and also many other yoga gurus from India. It's also a technique to help quiet that mind's chatter. We talked about before, we don't really see that many meditation studios or centers around the West. Usually in, when you're talking about it, going to a yoga class, you're going to a postural yoga class. That's what my school taught for the last 38 years. Because meditation techniques, the results are very intangible. In postural yoga, you're gonna see an improvement really fast. In meditation, you've got to be persistent and you've got to have faith and you've got to have perseverance. That's a big one, perseverance. So in this technique, when we take that inhale and we hold the breath, as we inhale, we're going to say to ourselves the word hung and then hold our breath for as long as you can while it's comfortable. This is really important. It's not about how long you can hold your breath. It's not a holding your breath contest. As soon as you need to take a breath, take it. So on the exhale, as you exhale, you say to yourself the word saw. And then once again, you're in this breathless state. Hung, hold, sa, hold. So we'll do that a few times and then I'll let you do it on your own as well. So if, on the, if you're sitting on the floor, make sure you're in a comfortable position that's not distracting you. If you're on a chair, put your butt up against the back of the chair so your spine is nice and tall, palms up, eyes closed, and remember, shift it to the third eye. That right there is a trigger that quiets the frontal lobe. First, let all the breath go. And we start, inhale, hung, hold. Exhale, sa, hold. Inhale, hung, hold. Exhale, so hold. Inhale, hum. Hold. So hold. But you're, you're doing this to yourself. It's not out loud. I'm just helping guide you. Inhale, hum. Hold. Exhale, so. Now do a few on your own. Everyone has different capacities of breath. One more cycle. And slowly open your eyes. So definitely a technique that I want you to practice. And with practice, you're going to allow those gaps to go longer and longer. Now, there's what's considered to be one of the first glimpses of that samadhi, that ecstasy of expanded awareness I was telling you about, is a, is a state called salpikalpa samadhi. And salpikalpa samadhi is a breathless state where this, the breath actually leaves the body or the soul, according to Yogananda, is imprisoned by the body. And for this brief temporary time, the soul is free from the body. That's the whole astral projection thing. And in that state, it's a breathless state. So the Hong Sa technique is preparing you for the sensation of Salpikalpa Samadhi which is this extraordinary place of, of expanded awareness, of ecstasy. Very much like the near-death experiences people talk about when they see the light and there's this feeling of just overwhelming joy. And that's what meditation can bring you to. 
And that's the whole concept of quieting the mind and finding that space between our thoughts. So these two techniques will help you. And also, like I said before, right after that intense postural yoga class, I know a lot of you do a lot of intense postural yoga, or it doesn't even have to be intense. After a postural yoga class, your body and your mind are more willing to let go. So take advantage of those moments. Take advantage of those times and then bring that experience back to your meditation when you're sitting up nice and tall, when you're not laying on the ground. So now what I'd like you to think about in your next meditation, those thoughts drifting across the inner vision of your mind. Take advantage of those postural yoga classes when you have that wonderful stillness, because that's the concept of meditation. And, I, and in this video here, Yoga Meditation Guide, I talk about the sphere. So you've got the bottom of the sphere, which is quieting your mind, quieting your body, nourishing the soul. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. That's great. That's the first step. That's a preliminary step for the higher part of the sphere, the immersion, the connection. So we prepare ourselves to connect. So when you're in, as, as the thoughts are drifting across your inner vision, you're thinking about plugging into that frequency and connecting with whatever the universe, whatever God means to you. As Yogananda says, talk to God in the language of your own heart, not the yoga heart, your heart, whatever that means to you. So the thoughts shift across our inner vision. And in that space between the thoughts, we can much better tap into the frequency, more, a lot more successful to tap into that frequency and the gap between our thoughts. Yoga chitta vritti naroda. Yoga quiets the mind, and we find that experience, the ecstasy of expanded awareness, just like those astral projectors, just like those near-death experiences. You can get it on command, at will, through your persistence, through your perseverance, allowing the thoughts to drift across your inner vision and let go of the result. Don't be so attached to plugging in. Just let it happen. So thanks again for joining me. If you have any comments, any struggles in your meditation, put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And you get notified every time I post a new video. Hit the like button and share it with your friends. Anybody you think may benefit from this video, we can all benefit from quieting that mind's chatter, plugging into the universe, and I'll see you the next video.